sunny. I can hear the running of people and the loss of breath. I take my shoes off and register myself. After that, I head straight to the warm up. I can't wait to travel with that. Growing up watching Kung Fu and Karate moves, you tend to want to imitate. I tell a cute white guy with a short cut comes to me. He smiles and tells me I'll be starting at boxing. Fuck. So I turn around, punching the bag, switching up styles. One, two, one, one, two. Jab, up and cut, step into that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the trainer saw me because he asked, Was that softball? I said, I want to put you in my advanced class. He's still watching me with his eyes. No shame. I already, I already knew that when he said that, it was time to go. Sooner or later, he would have asked where I learned to box from, because he asked me in the game, seeing as how quick I picked up. And I just did not want to explain how I came to know how to box. It was embarrassing. It's not an easy subject to start on. So if he asked, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. How like my brother's a younger brother, abusive dad. He has a real good learning experience. Nope. When well, older people would say stay in a child's place, I did not know what that was because I had to grow up fast. What was a child's place when you're cooking and cleaning at the age of six, hot dogs and cheese sandwiches, hoping you don't burn down the place, microwaving shit for two and making paper band-aids with tape that no one thought kids would get hurt. I had to be mom and dad when it was just me and my brother, and 85% of the time, that was it, besides the occasional check-in. I was born in Chicago, June 1st, 1996. Living there, I saw the trash that littered the street. But I also saw the people swarm there joyfully, there to taste the delicacies they have only heard of and what the Windy City had to offer. Growing up, I watched a lot of TV. I watched shows and tried to connect them to my life, hoping to not feel them, hoping and wishing for families I had only seen with my eyes. The coffee show was my favorite. Hoping for a father like Bill or like Danny Tanner for Full House, or the Winslow's from Family Matters. Not knowing at the time that TV was bullshit, put together fairy tales to keep you interested, seeing as you usually watch what you can't have. As a kid, I lived in the now, the present, because I couldn't go back in the past, and I did not know if I would see tomorrow. My dad, unfortunately, was a dumbass, and was pollinating other flowers. Him and my mom went together, I was a true mistake baby. Although my mom won't say that, it's a definition of me. She was told since she was young she would never be able to have kids because her uterus couldn't sustain or something. When she met my dad, they were co-workers and it was raining one night. She saw him and offered him a ride. She had a headache. He offered her a pill, which she assumed was Tylenol. Seeing as they were co-workers and got along, she took the Tylenol. She could not remember what she was doing. I'm here. <laughs> my dad denied me. He said, because all I have been producing is boys. There's no way I can have a girl. Well, here I am. <coughs> I had to take a DNA test, and that made me feel mad, but then nothing, because if you don't want me, then fine. You're lost, I guess. So when Benny, my brother's dad, was there, I kind of felt a little left out, because I did not have my dad, but it also made it worse that he actually did not want me, my dad. I think my dad was half the seed. The other half was my uncle. He was a drug user and dealer, and because he was almost always high, he would steal my shit, and yes, I was pissed. I learned real quick not to leave anything lying anywhere because I would leave it there and come back and it would be gone. Those two people were the seeds that I had in my life that were not positive for a young girl. When I was in third grade, my mom said we were moving to, from Chicago to California. She said it was for two reasons. One, because God told her to. And second, because my brother would be so dead who had gotten even worse than he already was. The transition was hectic. But that did not stop my brother's death from finding us. And although that was scary, that was not the reason God sent my mom to Cali. It was a setup for my other dad, James. Although I was young, I was not stupid. I could tell something was wrong, that my mom was being abused. But I just never really seen it, so I couldn't really speak on it. When I was older, maybe in the fourth or fifth grade, I don't know, somebody just told me to get up and go to the bathroom. And there my mom was crying in the mirror. She had a big swollen lips and two black eyes. and. When she saw me, all she did was cry more and more, repeatedly shaking her head, profusely apologizing. At that time, I was extremely antisocial. I did not know how to empathize with her. I did not know how to console my own mother. So I looked at her with a blank face, with no emotion, and patted her back like a robot, on beat, one, two, one, two, and said, we'll get through it, that's okay. I was living up to my Gemini horoscope. I guess they say those who are Geminis are usually two-faced and I was two-faced like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I had a routine struck. It was very, very changed, but it was a wake up, do my hygiene, get ready for school, eat breakfast. Most likely my mom was already gone to work. It was me, my brother, my brother's dad, Benny, and his female friend, Jenny. I did not like Benny's female friend. I could never look at her with the same respect I would a female stranger because she knew what was happening, even watched, and never helped. How can you, a woman yourself, watch another woman who helped you be beat and not call for help, interfere, or at any least anything, and still want to smile and laugh with everyone? Nah, I fuck that out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> My brother and I would walk to school together but hate each other. Every day was hit and miss. We had good days and a lot of bad days. We were put against each other, and any little thing could set us off on each other. We just did not like each other. We would go to school, and I had friends, but I kept them at a distance. I never let them get close. Plus, it was only elementary friends. It wasn't like they would be helping me when I really needed it, which was at home. Plus, it would be really hard to explain if my friend or friends came over, and unfortunately, they came on a bad day, and my mom was being abused. They would probably tell their parents, and my brother's dad would have most likely beat the fuck out of both of them and give it no fucks. He would probably also tell me to beat up my friend just so they can get an understanding to keep their mouth shut and teach me not to bring people over. But I never took that risk. If you saw how my brother's dad looked, he wasn't a small guy. All he did was work out in boxing. No one in that whole complex was as big as him. So I know no one wanted to risk and whoop ass whooping or embarrass him. My brother's dad put me and my brother against each other a lot. He would teach my brother and I boxing. My brother being five and I being seven, he was already showing us a proper stance and how to defend ourselves how to fight, and what to do. He was always training us, pushing us against each other, and egging us on. We would train the basics and soon move to advance. He showed us where to put certain body parts so they wouldn't be impacted as hard. We did P90X every day like it was religion. We worked out, ran, was on a strict diet. We weren't allowed to eat a lot of different foods. We couldn't go outside all the time. We stayed in our house like a little bubble, disconnected from society, cut off from the world. All we did was work out, fight, and hate each other. My, brother, my brother's dad would also make it unfair and give my brother a mouthpiece and headgear, and I would just get nothing. He would even stop the fight if he thought I was going to win sometimes. From an early age, the thought that I was on borrowed time scared me, but soon I did become cold, and soon those threats didn't fade me. And if I died, I died, but I was going out swinging. Death threats didn't scare me anymore. I was waiting for the real thing, and to this day, I'm not worried about any threats towards me, whether I know them or not. I'm waiting on action. To this day, I'm always on the go and ready for anything at the moment. I am jittery and extremely tense. When people come near me, I check them out to make sure they don't have anything on them. And I don't like when people walk up on me. I search all my surroundings, and even if I look a lot to a lot of people, if something happens, I'd be the first either fighting or running because I don't believe in getting shot. I still feel it though, the twitch or itch in my hands, the want and excitement that courses through me to box or do some type of mixed martial arts, the, the expel this pent up jitters I get when the sun hits me just right, but I don't. I don't because if I do, I'm afraid I will fall right into the cold, callous, anti-social little girl I used to be. Tick, top, tick, top. Time waits to no one, not even man. <coughs> but I do not want to be in the same place I am now. I want to be evolving, changing, and improving myself. They say that you do not have, the same, have to be the same person you were a day ago, a year ago, or even 15 minutes ago. So I think, no, I know I'm ready for the next stage of evolution.